Hello, good morning. I'm um, Dr. Vinayatri from the Department of Pediatrics. And today we are going to deal with the topic common viral infections in children. So, there are so many viral infections which, which children come across or encounter. Some of them lead to big clinical manifestations and complications. Some of them are on a lower grade. The most important thing to note in a viral infection is that many of them are vaccine preventable. Okay? And that is why we deal with these common viral infections in children. So to start off, in the list of the viral infections which are covered in the syllabus, they include measles, mumps, rubella, varicella, roseola infantum, erythema infectiosa, infectious pneumoniculosis, polio, viral hepatitis, dengue, chicken guinea, and finally HFMT, also known as and foot and mouth disease. So, in this itself, you can see from the names as I told you, most of these viral common viral infections are there in vaccines which you've heard well, isn't it? So, for example, I don't know vaccine you can hold. So, I'm not it's a consist of measles, mumps, and rubella. Then there is varicella, which is related to that. Then there are other two viral infections called roseola infection and erythema infectious, fifth and sixth disease. Then besides that, polio hepatitis also have got vaccines. Now dengue has come up with a vaccine. So these are mostly vaccine preventable disease and all, and all of them are mostly acute viral infections. None of them are chronic, especially except for polio whose long-term effects may last for it seem to be chronic and life-threatening. Okay, so amongst these, the ones we do are the ones which we are going to deal with today on common, which are the common viral infections because polio, viral hepatitis, dengue, and chicken guinea by themselves are fairly big topics and cannot be covered within a single class. So they need a class of their own. So let's begin. The first disease we are going to deal with is measles. So what is the causative organism means it is an RNA virus belonging to the horribly genus and a paramyxoviral family. So the reservoir is humans, and which means it trans it spreads from one human to another, and transmission is by droplet spread. So where is the droplet going to come from? Mainly the nose or respiratory secretions. So what is the period of infectivity? So four days before, five days after the onset of a rash. So most of these viral infections which we are dealing with have a fever with a rash. So the thing to notice, four days before, five days after the onset of a rash, you feel it. this person with measles, child with measles is infected. And a secondary attack rate is 90%, which means from one person to the other person getting, if I have measles as a child, for me, the chance of another child getting measles is almost 90%. That is why we should cut it off immediately or isolate. So the most common age group is 6 months to 5 years. So the incubation period is approximately 10 days. Okay. So what are the clinical features? So you have an initial prodromal phase and then an eruptive phase. So prodrome means which occurs before the rash. So four days before rash itself, Child is infected, what and all happens in her? Cough, cold, and pariza, that is rhinitis, and conjunctivitis. So the three C's are to be noted. So three C's in measles is a common question for vivas and so they must go out of three C's. Cough, cold, pariza, and conjunctivitis. And then the second pathic pneumonia in anthem which occurs is coplic spots, which are Arithmetic small spots which occur in the buccal mucosa opposite to the upper second molar tooth. Okay, so it's another name to be remembered. So once the prodromal phase of four days and all gets over, the rash starts. And uh, that phase is called an eruptive phase. You can see the picture there. 
So it starts on day four, it starts from the face and spreads downwards. So the rash is going through it with this because of big numbers and clusters and so the whole child is covered in rash. They are everything that is in macular. And again, it dissipates by five days in the ground only disc formation. That is the place where the rash is gone, it will there is a brownish tan. Like after a mosquito bite and all you get a tan. So this is the clinical uh, progression of measles. So after an incubation period there of maximum 10 days, the child starts with the three C's, cough, parisa, conjunctivitis, and fever. And then a complex pathology comes from day two. Then by day four or five, the rash starts. Okay, and finally after five days, at least 10 days of that, it goes down. So that is the typical pattern of measles. So sometimes in partially immune children, who receive either a, a one dose of a vaccine or so, they also may get measles, but in a very mild form. So we will tell that it is a modified measles. So those who are recipients who have the vaccine, which is not available now, they, those people who get measles after that, they get a very severe type of measles. That is why it is skilled vaccines which they have not. Which, and this severe form is associated with the respiratory megaly. However, it is not contagious. It is related to the immune response within the child. But that is called as atypical measles. And there is one severe form, another severe form of measles, which has got, has got high fever and bleeding, convulsions, diet, bleeding, bleeding is very common, mouth, GI, okay, malignant element of cheese and all may occur. And then purpure will be there all over the body. And also, because you small vessel breakages in the brain, they also lead to convulsions. So that type of disease is called as hemorrhagic disease. So what are the complications you look for? Why is disease an important disease? And why is it become a vaccine preventive disease? Even though the course of illness altogether spans only for about two weeks, there are a lot of complications which may occur. And the important thing is it's preventable by a vaccine. So if you can prevent all these complications by a vaccine, um, then it is a good thing, right? So what are the complications in the respiratory tract? Starting in the otitis media, then laryngitis, tracheo, laryngotracheitis, associated with lymphadenopathy, and going to the lungs, pneumonia, bronchopneumonia, bronchitis, giant cell pneumonia, pulmonary CNS, you have all types of encephalitis, acute form, latent form, and then chronic or long-term form. So it can be an acute encephalitis occurring while uh, measles itself is occurring because of the antigen toxin response and latent toxin response which lies dormant and then activates encephalitis which is after around two weeks or so. can be a latent encephalitis and subcute sclerosis and encephalitis occurs up to years. Okay. Then digestive system you can have persistent diarrhea, appendicitis or eleocolitis also. And overall the child will become malnourished and leading to protein malnutrition and high serostamia. How do you diagnose? So mainly it is a clinical diagnosis. The characteristic fever pattern, rash pattern, three C's, complex spots, which all these things you have to put together. Serology, if you want to, you can diagnose by IgM antibodies, PCR also. So mostly it is a viral infection, so you will not need to give any antibiotics also. It is managed symptomatically with antipyretics, maintain good hygiene, good nutrition, hydration. Xerophthalmia is a common complication with allergy, so vitamin supplementation is important. In case child is having a complicated measles, you have to hospitalize and wait. How do you prevent it? By giving MR or MMR vaccine. So it is given in two doses, one at nine months and another at 15 months. So the next part of MMR measles, which is mumps. Mumps is also an RNA virus of the paramyxovirus family. And it is a world over endemic condition. So it is not, this is present in children between 5 to 15 years, most commonly winter and spring. It is transmitted again through droplet infection or direct contact with infected saliva. 
or any fomites which are contaminated by saliva and urine. Understand? So fomite can be any kerchief, clothing, dress, etc. Bedding. So the period of infectivity is seven days prior to nine days after the swelling of the parotid glands. Secondary infection rate is 48% and the incubation period is two to four weeks. So for all the diseases, this, this, is, this is the pattern which you know, what is causative organism, uh, how is it transmitted, then what is the incubation period, and uh, how is it spread. Secondary attack rate, if you can remember. So, uh, here again you have a problem of fever, headache, muscle aches, tiredness, and loss of appetite occurs. Then, after three days, child starts developing parotitis and swelling of the parotid glands. So, it is a swollen and tender salivary glands. They become swollen and tender and even push the ears forward, like as it is seen in the picture. It's usually bilateral, or unilateral 25% and the resolution is occurring in a week or so. So, why is it important? It is because in the complications that are associated with it. Which are a pressure on the auditory nerve, auditory nerve damage leading to hearing loss. CMS, aseptic meningitis in 10%. Other than that, cerebellar ataxia, transverse myelitis and guillain barre syndrome. Then, Mastitis, 30% of females, and in few cases, inflammation of the ovaries. Orchitis in around 30% of males. However, it is usually in natural and does not lead to fertility problems. And the other organs which are affected because of spread of the virus through the reticular endothelial system can add myocarditis and nephritis and pancreatitis. Myocarditis is usually a uh, very expected complication is simply a viral infection, which has to be kept in mind always. So, how do you diagnose clinically with all clinical suspicion? Significant rise in IgG, titer, and IgM antibodies. Real time PCR of the oral lupus are seen as infections usually exhibit a lymphocytopleocytosis. In this, you get an aseptic meningitis case. You do a number of puncture tapping and you see the cell phone, you will see a number increase in number of lymphocytes because it is a viral infection. If you have a bacteria in the there will be more number of neutrophils. So, how do you manage antibiotics, warm or cold baths to slow, soothe the carotid glands, plenty of fluids? For orchitis, if pain is there, anti inflammatory drugs. Complicated cases need hospitalization. For aseptic meningitis, you bring down the rays in ICP. You have to have been married or if there is severe pain for arthritis and arthritis or arthritis, you can give steroids also. So, how do you prevent it? How what you know the source of infection? Isn't it? So go don't go near the infected persons. And also live at you to MMR vaccine. The third of the MMR constitutes rubella. So, rubella again is an RNA virus but belonging to Toba variety family. Again, the host is human and transmitted through droplets also and also from mother to child, which is transplacental. Subclinical to clinical presentations can be present. So, in two is to one. That is why here you have to take care of it. So, the mother can present subclinically also, the child may get affected. So, one week before to one week after the onset of crash is the infectivity period. So, here also you have a generalized rash all over the body. Okay. And it is on the face initially and covers the whole body within 24 hours. Okay. And uh, there is an associated low grade fever with it. The rash lasts for about three days. And this is the difference between measles. Measles had a rash which started on day four. It gives the head and goes down all the body. Here, as soon as the rush starts within 24 hours, this rush spreads all over the body and is evenly distributed almost. It lasts for three days. And then after that, um, it resolves. 
spontaneous way results. And there we had public spots to look for. Here you have another type of spot for this for sharing the spots, which is present in the upper part of the soft palette in 20% of cases. Again, localized symptoms in the after a GMI could present. So this is the type of rash all over the body. And here you can see small particular spots there over the soft palate. These are the partial immune spots. How do you diagnose? Clinically, mobile antibodies, IgM and IgG, and virus isolation. How do you manage? Supporting management, paracetamol. You have so much of it, you can do antihistamines. So, transplacental spread is one group of spread. So, what happens when the virus goes transplacentally? It leads to congenital rubella syndrome. So, especially when the infection is transported in the first trimester, 50% of the newborns are infected. That is why it is very important disease. So, what are the components of congenital rubella syndrome? Eyes, microphthalmia, and cataract pinker, ears, sensory neural defect, then heart, PDA, and pulmonary stenosis. So, these are triad. Besides that, microcephaly, mental retardation, hypotosphenia, megaline will also be there. How do you prevent it? Again, by the MMR live vaccine, 9 months and 15 months. As pregnant women, they are known that they are not immunized, they can also be given vaccine to prevent this transplacent spread. The only thing is, it has got an excellent prognosis, lifelong immunity. Reinfections are hardly documented. Next is another one close to this family, which is varicella or chicken box. So this is a DNA virus, or the herb, called as the varicella zoster virus, the zoster virus, only present in humans, transmitted through air on or direct contact. So period of infectivity is two days before onset of rush till all the lesions are crusted. So there's no definite time back gap until all these chicken box lesions heal and get crusted you are infectious. Secondary attack rate is 80% and the IP is from 10 to 21 days. Long incubation period, right? So here, the age group is again from 5 to 10 years which is the peak, but which can occur earlier also from one one and a half years onwards. Any child is susceptible to chicken box. So you will have a mild fever for one to two days, and then the rash starts. Initially, it comes on the face and the trunk. Okay, so it starts as a small macule, then it becomes a papule, and then a vesicle, which looks like a teardrop, like tears come down. It is a fluid filled vesicle. So it is look, but it looks cl cloudy. And then finally, it uh, bursts and there is some thrusting occurring. Okay, it forms a cavity like thing with thrust on the edges. So, this is the stage of lesion. The thing is, different crops of uh, lesions come up at different places at different times. So, while one is in the macule stage, the other one can be in a second stage, the other one started thrusting, and this variation in stages is called as pleomorphism. They are very itchy or poritic. So that is something to be looked out for. And the lesions also can occur on the mucosa, like lips, oral cavity also. So you have to be, so it is kind of a irritating condition. Recovery is usually there in one week. There are a number of complications associated with this. One is because of this itchy lesions at different stages, children tend to scratch, 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 and again next dirt and skin infections start from occurring, which is a bacterial. So there's a secondary bacterial infection occurring. Most common causes being staph and streptococci. Then CNS infections again, acute post-infectious encephalitis, cerebellar ataxia, optical neuritis, land wound villain body syndrome, and transverse myelitis. RS pneumonia. Sometimes, again, like this one, you can have a chicken box also. And the other organs. Nephritis, myocarditis, pancreatitis, arthritis. What if the mother gets varicella during pregnancy? Again, like rubella, if the first trimester mother gets varicella, it can lead to embryopathies or congenital deformities. Cutaneous scarring, which I will be born with cutaneous scars, limb hypoplasia, chorea retinitis, cataracts, and seizures. If the mother develops chicken box near birth, the child will also have. The eye uh, antigens inside, so which will also be the disseminated varicella. Progressive varicella syndrome. 
So how do you diagnose? So so many clinical findings which help us diagnose. So the two sides are you can take a fat smear or ELISA to find the IgM antibodies. And if the child has persistent fever, then you should think it is not just chicken box, there's some secondary infection also. So by itching, you can give calamine, lotion, or oral antihistamines. Even you can give antipyretics like paracetamol, you don't give any aspirin. It will lead to aspirin, very simple. And if in severe conditions, you can give acyclovir to decrease the uh, severity. So, like if you give acyclovir within 48 hours, you can decrease the severity by two to three days maximum. So, it is 20 kg per kg per dose, orally for five days. If the child has got so many lesions and requires hospitalization, you can give IV and uh, acyclovir and 10 mg per kg for 14 days, three times a day. How do you prevent it? By vaccination. You have varicella vaccine and 15 months followed by a second dose three months later. Passive immunization to newborns born to mothers with or varicella can be given IVIG. It can also be given to immunocompromised patients and zero negative pregnant women. That is, for who is a zero negative pregnant woman, so pregnant women is checked for varicella antibodies and found not to have any antibody, you can inject antibodies directly. So that's all about chicken box. Next is roseola exanthem, which is also called as exanthem subitum or sixth disease. It is caused by a DNA virus, human herpes virus 6. Something 6 6 is in common. Other causes of human herpes virus 7 and also echo virus 16 occurs most commonly between 6 months to 3 years. There is a seasonal position to this condition which occurs in spring and autumn. The incubation period is 5 to 15 days. Clinical features, you have a high onset of fever, horizon, and gingivitis and pharyngitis. The important thing to note is there is an abrupt loss of uh, stoppage of fever and then suddenly the rush occurs. So while the child is having rush, there is no fever. So what is the type of rush? It is an aglopapular rush standing on the trunk and extending to the extremities and face. Here again, you have another anathem, which is called the Nagayama spot, which is present in soft palate and the base of the uvula. They are healthy matters, patterns. Post auricular lymphadenopathy is also a common feature. Besides this, you can have bulging anterior fundament and swelling of eyelids. The only good thing about this is just the low infectivity. There are no outbreaks of this disease. It is kind of an isolated disease. So how do you diagnose by clinical and virus isolation, IgM? It is a self limiting disease and requires supportive care alone. The next one is fifth disease, as I told you, or erythema infectiosum. It is caused by human parvovirus P90. So six is caused by human parvovirus 6 and 7 and echovirus. This is caused by parvovirus B19. Again, it is spread through respiratory secretions. The age is between 5 to 15 years. Incubation period lasts from four, one week to four weeks, one month. There is no program here. Main thing of this is airplane infections. There are characteristic skin lesions in three stages. Initially, slapped cheeks are found to be seen. That is the erythematous phase. As shown in the picture there on the top. Second, as itchy, you can get that is macular rashes in the trunk and extremities. However, palms and soles are prescribed. And finally, these rashes starting fading from the center, giving a reticular pattern, which diffuses, disappears in two weeks without any disformation. So, what do you remember in the epithelial infectious response to this disease? And caused by human parovirus B19. This human parovirus B19, you know, it is another cause of Epstein bar. Okay, uh, sorry, human parovirus B19. And what else should we know? There is the rash occurring abruptly after 
Any stoppage of fever, slapped cheeks, and there is no flow drop here. Yeah, so there are slapped cheeks and then rashes over, all over the body and let it finally fade out, leading to a reticular pattern. So they have complications like aseptic meningitis, arthrotic arthralgia, and here you have ITP, immune thrombocytopenia purpura, aplastic crisis, rarely in those with chronic anemia and thrombocytopenia. Diagnosis is by IgM antibiotics, and it is again a self-limited disease with supportive management. This is where Epstein Barr comes into play. It is the causative agent of infectious mononucleosis, again a DNA virus. How does it spread? Either through kissing or exchange of saliva, shared in the oral secretions. Okay. So, so when the mother, when elder sibling kisses the younger sibling, or mother kisses the child, all those ways in all, this can spread. So, actually in developing countries only presents an older, younger age group. In developed countries, even older age groups can get this. What happens is, this virus replicates in the oral epithelial cells and salivary glands, travels in the B lymphocytes, reaches the lymph nodes, particular in the tail system, the lymphocytes, liver, and spleen. There, CD8 lymphoproliferation also occurs, leading to the presence of atypical lymphocytes. This atypical lymphocytes is a characteristic feature of infectious mononucleosis. So, what are the clinical features? There is a prodrome of malaise, fever, headache, nausea, vomiting, sore throat. Then, when you start to extirpate, there will be pharyngeal inflammation with exudates and petechiae at the junction of the soft and hard palate. Then there is generalized lymphadenopathy, cervical, axillary, and inguinal, in that order only. Then hepatosplenum again, maculopapular, rashes are together. So, why is this important? Because it can lead to splenic rupture following a minor trauma itself. So, it goes and proliferates in the spleen, causing CD8 proliferation, atypical lymphocytes, and the spleen becomes so massive that it can lead to splenic rupture even with a minor trauma like walking, eating a staircase, something which you won't expect at all. It can lead to splenic rupture. Then, because of the enlarged nodes, parangitis, airway obstruction can occur. As usual, CNS complications like meningitis, ataxia. Then the others, pneumonitis, myocarditis, pancreatitis, pancytopenia. So how do you diagnose? So there will be leukocytosis or absolute leukocytosis with atypical lymphocytes, isn't it? That's what we saw in the pathogenesis. Platelet count is low, LFT is raised, SCOTPT is raised, and you have a screening test which is called as a heterophile antibody test or a polymonal test. Okay, where antibodies are tested. For. And then finally, you can identify the Ig antibodies to the capsid, viral capsid antigen, which is the diagnostic test. Treatment is symptomatic management, blood stress, fluid intake, and all. And in case of severe cases, one milligram per kg per day, prednisone can be given. And in, for enlarged adenoids, intranasal steroids can also be given. Now, finally, moving on to the Next condition, which I told you, is called HFMD, hand, foot, mouth disease. So, as the name suggests, where or not do you find the lesions? Hands, feet, and mouth. So, it is caused by coxical virus E16 or enterovirus M and enterovirus MD1, belonging to the genus Introviridae or Picornaviridae. So, most common age group is less than 10 years, but it can be found in other age groups too. Transmission is mainly from direct contact from the lesions in surface in the hands, feet, so direct contact, touching and all can cause. Otherwise, two formats means by using uh, like a wet towel, mats, bed sheets, lining again, another person can get infected. So, the features are seen there in the pictures. Hand, feet, mouth. You have a program of low fever, malice and so on. Then followed by ulcers in the posterior aspect of oral cavity. A kind of painful ulcers in the oral cavity. Then you have papular vesicular skin rashes. So this is not just a macular rash, it is papular vesicular skin rash, most commonly on the palms and soles, and less commonly in the buttocks, knees, elbows, and genital area. So varicella and the other 
rashes do not include like this erythema infectious in the bowel. They do not include the palms and soles. But here it is typically of the palms and soles. Other areas are very less, and it resolves in around four to five days. Well, but what does it lead to? It has a temporary complication of temporary loss of the finger and toenails because mainly a lot of these formation occurs because of these papillary vesicular rashes and aseptic meningitis, encephalitis, myocarditis, pancreatitis, and all RDS are occur. And sometimes, another thing to notice, sometimes it can cause a polio like paralysis also. So, diagnosis is mainly clinical. You have differential diagnosis of how herpetic gingivodomus gingivodomus after sepsis, chicken pox, insect bite allergies, and herpingitis. How do you treat it? It is treated again symptomatically hydration and IG. However, there is no vaccine available for this. You have to keep yourself isolated and wait it out. So, these are the main vaccine presentable and common viral illnesses which occur within 15 years of age usually. And we have to keep a good watch for because all of them are not interrelated signs and symptoms. There are some characteristic features we saw for each which helps us to diagnose and we know that there are diagnostic tests. Best thing you should do is once you identify them, telling them to the mother, one, it is a communicable disease, so you have to be, it has to be communicated to the public health department people so that there is to prevent, contain this disease and make sure it doesn't spread. They don't spread. So that is why one way it is important. The other way, you can reassure the mother or father that you need such and such a thing and you have to, to isolate the child separately also and what not to do and not to do so that the uh, infection can be contained. So I hope the common viral diseases are clear for you. It is important for your theory as well as a practical why also point of view. You just know the main points and everything and I will show you. Thank you.